If you thought that in order to reduce your personal bill to zero tax, uh, you need to move to some of the countries that has a headline uh, tax of zero percent, that's not entirely true. And in today's video, I'm going to explain to you how you can move to some of the countries that do have a higher headline tax, but still can bring your personal taxes to zero. Hi, I'm Yovana from Nomad Capitalist, where we help seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and their families obtain multiple residence and citizenship, protect their wealth, improve their businesses, uh, and reduce their personal tax bill. Many people believe that in order to reduce your personal taxes to zero, you have to do one of the two things. So you either need to travel full time around the world in order not to trigger um, any tax residence. That's not entirely true. That's not true at all. Um, so many countries are doubling down on that. So whether your home country is one of more aggressive tax countries, such as Australia um, or UK or Canada, or you're spending slightly more time than you should um, in some of very popular digital nomad destination, you are risking to be taxed. Um, in some cases, even in both places. Um, so, but you're definitely being, uh, you're risking being taxed by your home country. Um, so this is not, um, while many people apply this rule, hope that they will never be caught. There is huge risks with uh, this way of traveling around, not spending much time in one place and hoping that your tax bill will never um, catch up with you. Again, very risky move. And we would always advise, especially if you're living um, one of those more tax aggressive countries to establish a tax residence in a very preferable um, tax jurisdiction that will ensure that you, you know, at least on paper, have some places where you are paying taxes um, and um, allow you to travel the world. So probably a place that doesn't require you much of a physical presence on the ground. So that is one way, again, highly risky. Um, you might have issues with that in the future, okay. especially if you're with the family. Uh, that can really be a huge trigger for many countries to charge you um, with taxes. And as I said, you're risking to be taxed in more than one place, and you're risking of being taxed in a place where you definitely don't want to be taxed or some of the higher tax countries. The other misconception is that you have to live in a place with a headline zero percent tax rate. So places like UAE, Bahamas, Cayman Islands, Monaco, Vanuatu, uh, and that's the only way for your personal taxes to be zero. Again, that's not um, entirely true. If you want to live in those places, you are free to do so. If that suits your lifestyle, um, amazing. It will really facilitate your um, tax planning uh, just because you, in this case, pretty much don't have to take uh, care about structuring things around. Obviously, you still need to um, take care about um, you know, the country where you are coming from or the country where you are leaving, that that will work for them. Obviously, you need to take care uh, about your corporate affairs, uh, but in general, it will make your tax planning easier. If you want to live in some of those places, go ahead. But for those that do not want to live um, in some of those places, what you should be looking into are territorial tax countries. So there's a lot of misconceptions about territorial tax countries and what kind of taxes you need to pay there. So territorial tax countries are countries which have a tax system that only charges you for the income that was generated inside of territories of that country. So any type of offshore income in that place is not taxable. Why I said generated, and that is where a lot of confusion is coming from. If you work from, let's say, Malaysia, one of territorial tax countries. So if you work from Malaysia, you spend your tax resident in Malaysia, you spend there, let's say, uh, 10 months per year, and you actively work for a foreign company or for your own company or managing your own company that is 
obviously offshore, outside of Malaysia, that is considered Malaysian generated income. So, um, and there, that's where the biggest misconception is coming from. As long as you do not physically work under work permits and um, you know, uh, process that money through Malaysian payroll, that's not considered uh, a Malaysian income. So that's why I said everything generated inside of the territories of um, a territorial tax country is considered taxable. For example, if you are living off of your rental income, if your rent is from Malaysian property, for example, and you're a Malaysian tax resident, you're obviously going to pay taxes on that. But if your rental income is coming from abroad, uh, from a foreign property, um, or let's say a property that is located in Indonesia, that is not going to be taxable in Malaysia. Again, work is the one that is critical um, and can cause a lot of issues, so very careful um, structuring there is required. Uh, obviously, if you are the owner of uh, foreign companies and you live in a territorial tax country, you need to uh, be aware of permanent establishment rules um, regarding your foreign company. So if you are managing, you might not be employed by that company, but you are effectively managing um, your uh, foreign affairs, uh, your offshore company, that also might be considered as a permanent um, establishment slash your foreign company might be deemed as a domestic. But those are uh, rules that exist in pretty much every single, single country in the world, no matter whether they are territorial or worldwide taxation, or some other sorts. So you really need to be careful um, what you're going to put in papers. But again, um, general uh, territorial tax countries only tax you on the income generated inside of that territory. So everything generated outside of it um, is not taxable. In many cases, you don't even have to report it uh, on your um, tax uh, returns. Um, in some cases, you do have to report it but it's not taxable. Obviously, this is applicable only in cases where you are a tax resident of those countries, uh, but also if you are just spending some time there. So which countries do have territorial um, tax regime? Obviously, I mentioned Malaysia. They are changing uh, certain rules slightly from 2026, so they will be open to more worldwide taxation, but only if remitted to the country. So they have this mix between worldwide and territorial that is based on remittance. Many other countries do have a very similar approach. So if you do not remit income uh, in the country, we don't know about it. Don't worry about it. Singapore, probably one of the best known um, territorial tax jurisdiction. That territoriality applies for both companies and individuals. So living in Singapore, and earning uh, income outside of Singapore um, will uh, really bring you um, almost 0% tax bill. Then we have Philippines in Southeast Asia, um, in a uh, European region. Georgia is one of the countries. Nicaragua, Costa Rica, again, Costa Rica might change their system. They, start, they introduced a bill this year that will uh, change um, it's to worldwide uh, taxation. That bill was vetoed by the president, uh, but they will probably continue uh, bringing up that bill in the future. Paraguay um, is one of a um, very well-known um, jurisdiction with a territorial tax system. On the top of that, even if you generate income in Paraguay, it's a really a uh, favorable 10% tax rate. There are a couple countries that are generally worldwide taxation, but they do have um, exemptions, uh, at least for the first couple of years. If you're considering moving to some of territorial tax countries and becoming a tax resident in those places, as I mentioned, make sure that you structure your um, affairs very well. It is slightly easier than if you're moving to high tax worldwide taxation country. Uh, but again, you need to make sure not to trigger 
those permanent establishment rules. Uh, and if you need any help with that um, or any sort of tax or estate planning, uh, Nomad Capitalist team is always happy to help.